so the next speaker is uh, uh, Prasanna Das. Uh, he's in the Jawaharlal Nehru Center for Advanced Scientific Research, Bangalore. Uh, he'll be talking about ultra emission polymer nanocomposite pen for passive daytime radiative cooling. Uh, go ahead, Prasanna. Thank you, sir, for introducing me. Uh, good, morning, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, ultra emissive polymer nanocomposite paint for passive daytime radiative cooling. Uh, in our everyday, uh, we uh, used to see that every body, like every object, uh, used to heat up because of sunlight coming from the sun, right? And when the sun uh, heating is uh, very high, uh, the surface temperature becomes very high compared to the ambient temperature, and that leads to different uh, uh, headache in our like everyday life. Uh, to humans and also animals also. And uh, to get rid of this uh, hot weather condition, we used to uh, use space cooling. For example, uh, different uh, active cooling devices, electric fan, uh, air conditioner, uh, air cooler for our personal thermal management, and uh, refrigerator for preserving our food items. Uh, but these active cooling devices uh, consume a lot of electrical energy. For example, 17% uh, of the global electricity is used for this purpose. And uh, by 2050, this uh, consumption will be highest compared to the other electricity necessities. And uh, additionally, 8% of the global greenhouse gas emit are emitted from these active cooling devices. For example, chlorofluorocarbon, CFC. And that lead to different climate change problems, uh, most importantly, global warming. And there is a passive way of cooling. Uh, if we see uh, that uh, sun, is at uh, 6,000 Kelvin, and if we use sun as a heat source and uh, space, which is at 3 Kelvin, uh, can be used as heat sink, then every object in our Earth uh, can be used uh, as a Carnot engine with the, efficiency, uh, with the efficiency determined by the temperature of the sun and the space. And every object in our Earth actually emits uh, radiation, thermal radiation in the mid for regions, 8 to 13 micron, and the atmosphere is transparent in this region. So all the heat from our body can go directly into the space. And this way of cooling is known as passive radiative cooling. Now to achieve this passive radiative cooling, we have to know about uh, energy balance, like how much energy is coming in uh, to our art and how much energy is going out from our art. And uh, if we uh, consider a radiative cooler, and uh, the energy is coming in uh, to the radiative cooler. For example, the uh, intensity is coming in from the sunlight, from the sun, uh, from the atmosphere, and the non-radiative, like uh, convective and conductive way, must be balanced out with the heat uh, thermal radiation going out from the radiative cooler. And when this like uh, radiative heat is uh, dominate, uh, dominated over the uh, other incoming radiation, then cooling occurs. Now in night time it is easy to achieve this cooling because there is no sun. Uh, we can use uh, highly emissive uh, insulating material uh, and we use the, using that we can, use the, we can get the night time cooling. But in daytime it is difficult to achieve because there is sun. And uh, the question is like how to cool under sunlight. Now uh, to get an answer of this question we can look into our nature. For example like uh, in desert condition in Sahara there is a creature uh, called Saharan silver ant. They can survive in 55 to 60 degrees Celsius temperature because of their uh, silverous, uh, silverous appearance of their body. Uh, so this silverous coating, uh, like uh, they have silverous hair, uh, they can actually reflect the whole of the solar spectrum and also the hair or the fiber of their body can, uh, used to uh, release the excess heat from their body. And also in Iran, there are ice houses which is used to use for uh, making ice and reserve, preserving the food items. In India, there are clay, clay pots uh, which is used to uh, keep the water cool in summer days. So to get the efficient relative cooling, uh, we need two uh, requirements. One is the high solar reflection in this uh, solar spectrum region so that nothing heat can be absorbed. And uh, there is a high thermal emission in the mid infrared region, like 8 to 13 micron. But natural materials actually do not, do not possess this both functionality in, uh, simultaneously. So therefore, we have to use on uh, an artificially structured metamaterial, and uh, one of the like, common examples is polymer nanocomposite, 
where MG, uh, like uh, when dielectric nanoparticles are dispersed in polymer matrix. Uh, here we have used MGO nanoparticles because uh, MGO has a very large band gap and it has high refractive index to enhance the optical reflection. Also, it has phonon resonance like MGO bond vibration, which is that 11.7 micron, which is actually uh, inside the atmospheric transfer window to enhance the thermal emission. Uh, we have used PBDF because uh, it is uh, act acting as a binder and it has very high thermal emissivity in the atmospheric transmission window. Uh, and also it has low absorptivity in the solar spectrum region. Now to prepare the uh, polymer nanocomposite paint, uh, the, the uh, method is very simple. Uh, like we have uh, take the ingredients MGO and PBDF and by using solvent, we have make a uh, colloidal solution by after stirring, and we can, uh, we coat that on a, uh, like substrate and after uh, we, ha we have used baking for complete evaporation of the solvent and we finally got a, uh, a polymer composite paint and we can coat that on a different substrate. We have uh, here, sorry, uh, here we have uh, uh, shown on a, uh, we have coated on a ceramic paper. Now we have to check the optical property, we have measured the uh, solar reflection uh, from uh, in the solar spectrum region from 300 to 2500 nanometer and uh, it shows excellent reflectivity of 96.3% uh, because of the miscattering of light from the MGO nanoparticles. Uh, we checked the thermal emission property uh, in the infrared region and it shows a uh, very uh, emissivity of 98.5% because of the MGO bond vibration, also the bonding and stretching vibration of the PBDM molecules. Uh, we have checked the, we have compared these properties, like these properties with the commercially available white paint uh, and uh, these both properties, solar reflectivity and thermal emissivity, both values are higher uh, in case of our paint compared to the commercially white paint. Now we check the uh, uh, weight ratio effect on the optical property. Now as the MGO nanoparticles are dispersed inside the uh, polymer matrix, if we increase the MGO ratio, it increases the uh, volume fraction and that leads to uh, like a higher solar reflection and thermal emission. Uh, so if you see, uh, as you increase the uh, as you increase the, uh, the weight ratio from one is to one to uh, four is to one, the solar reflection increases, also the thermal emission increases. Now to check the cooling performance, uh, we have uh, built up a device and we have measured the th temperature of the MGO PVD paint uh, compared to a uh, uh, like a base substrate uh, which is placed side by side in identical environments and. Uh, uh, we kept that device in a under like uh, solar radiation uh, on a on a rooftop, and these are the device like uh, these are the photos from different angle, and uh, uh, this is the result. Uh, we can see that the temperature of the MGO PBTA paint actually remains uh, seven degrees C uh, on average lower compared to the subambient temperature, which is actually the temperature of the substrate, and the maximum temperature drops is thirteen degrees Celsius, and we have checked the uh, we have checked the like property cooling performance compared to a commercially available paint and it shows that around three to five degrees Celsius are uh, temperature reduction with our paint. Now with, to check the mechanical stability, we have coated on different substrate, for example, uh, ceramic papers and wood sticks and it is easily coatable, uh, coatable on different substrate and uh, we have checked the water resistant property and it is super, uh, it is hydrophobic in nature with water angle of 110 degree. And uh, uh, we have checked the durability of the cooling performance. So we have taken uh, two papers with coated on and uncoated on. And we uh, check the cooling performance with IR camera uh, in January 2023. It shows 10 degrees, uh, 10 degrees Celsius reduction. And also after eight months, uh, we, checked the, we checked again and it shows uh, it, the temperature reduction almost uh, uh, remains same. So therefore it is very durable. So in conclusion, uh, our paint actually uh, shows a very high radiative cooling of 70 degrees Celsius on average and 13 degrees C maximum. Uh, and it, is, uh, it involves very simple fabrication method. It is low cost, it is durable, and it's scalable for practical application. Now the work is published in last year, and I, I want to acknowledge my professor, uh, Professor Bibasa for guiding me, and my lab mates for all the help, and uh, JNCSR for all the world class facilities available there and RACNOR and RACCAM for funding this project. Thank you. Yeah, there is uh, time for one question. Yeah. Hello, sir.
Thank you. Thank you very much. An interesting story. What, is it possible to use something as an alternative to MGO? Because if you use MGO, it will have originally been mag magnesium carbonate. Yes. <laughs> and so when you produce MGO, you produce CO2. Yes. Uh, um, like, uh, if you use MGO, there will, be, there will not be any problem. But uh, as you tell that, uh, there is dolomite, actually, uh, which is also like uh, consists of Mg and uh, calcium. So that can also be used for this purpose. It can be used or can't? It can be used, yes. Because dolomite would be much better because it, it's a carbonate, so you don't have to... Yeah, you can use it, yeah. It. But Mg is uh, available and low cost and earth abundant like that, so that's why. But it was still originally made from dolomite. <laughs> yes, 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 so that's true. So you release the CO2. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Prashna.